So where do I get quality compression? Can I get these at a big box store? That's a great question. Of all the patients that I see, I believe about one of five that have tried compression tells me that what they have and what they have purchased from a, a drug store or something really made a difference. That means 80% of them had a negative compression experience. There's many different reasons for that. So can you buy them at a big box store? You can. Is it gonna be the right stocking for you? Is it the right dose of compression? Do you get proper measurements when you're at that location so that you have something that fits you properly? Is it the right strength of compression based upon what you have from the standpoint of if you have no swelling, you may not need a big dose of compression. If you've got a pretty significant amount of swelling, a lighter dose of compression may not work at all. So I believe when it comes to looking at compression and identifying what compression may be the best uh, for you, it, it really comes down to what are we needing the compression for? And if it's related to a, uh, a venous concern or if it's related to uh, any complications related to veins such as blood clots or conditions like lymphedema, um, you really should be advised on what compression garment would be best for your uh, certain conditions. And not only that, not all compression applications involve a stocking, okay? There are different tools that we have uh, that can provide effective compression without having to struggle to apply. So the question is really, what does the dose of compression mean? The dose of compression would be uh, like um, how strong the stocking is or how strong the garment is. There are different levels of strength and the level of strength depends upon what the needs of the patients are. So a lightweight stocking, that would be a 15 to 20 weight or dose would be really good for someone who's asymptomatic, who wants to wear something at work as a preventative um, mechanism and or just to uh, wear it with travel. 20 to 30 is kind of the, the, the wheelhouse that we operate in mostly, and that's for patients with symptomatic varicosities or uh, meaningful symptoms and or swelling. You just won't get swelling controlled with a dose of compression that's, that's less than 20 to 30. And if you have advanced skin changes and a lot of swelling, oftentimes we have to go higher to that 30 to 40. And in rare instances, we have to go above that. So the dose of compression really refers to the strength of the garment and the effects on the tissue. So how, how does somebody get measured for appropriate compression? I think, um, that's a great question. The right measurements for compression involve understanding what the smallest ankle size is, what the largest calf size is, understanding the height from the popliteal crease, that's the crease behind the knee to the floor for a knee-high garment. Now keep in mind a knee-high garment uh, should only go right to the top of the calf, should never go all the way to the knee where it may roll. That's one of the reasons why people have trouble with compression is that when they buy a knee-high garment, they feel it has to go to the knee, but it's, it's designed to go to the top of the calf. Um, if the truth be known, I've, I've encouraged all of the quality uh, compression vendors, the executives I've had a chance to meet over the years to consider changing that from a knee-high to a a calf high garment, okay? But that's that's one of the one of the pitfalls people have when they try to get compression on their own. They they just don't apply it properly. When it comes to uh, measuring for a thigh high garment, uh, it basically goes all the way up to the level of the buttock crease, the circumference at the buttock crease, and then that uh, height from the buttock crease to the floor. When you have those measurements then you have to understand it's those measurements that get you into a garment that should be able to be fitted properly so that you see the benefit. If there is a mismatch between the ankle calf relationship, where we see sometimes in heavy legs, it's not going to be a standard uh, garment or a standard knit that will provide the support for those patients. 
In addition, on heavier legs, sometimes we need a silicone band so that it doesn't roll at the top and it can actually stay in place uh, much, much more um, effectively uh, without any concerns of that. When it comes to um, how the measurements are taken, uh, they should be standard with those particular things that I just shared so that anybody measuring your legs, whether it's at a, a big box store or at a vein center or at a uh, durable medical goods place, they should be taking the same measurements to be able to get you in a appropriate garment.